When we're leading the horse, our body position with the horse is very important. We want our shoulder to be even right with the horse's throat latch. And then we will be looking in the same direction as the horse moving forward. If we get too far out in the front, then we run the risk of the horse actually running us over if they get spooked. If we're too far behind that point, they have most of the control. Their body weight can carry forward and if they run off, then we're left either dragging behind with the rope or letting go. When leading the horse, it's important to know how to hold the lead rope correctly. We don't want to hold right up at the snap and we don't want to hold too far away. So this helps us to maintain the most control and the lead rope too long, the youngster might get a leg tripped in as they're walking. So we want to make sure that that lead rope is out of the way and if the horse does happen to, to run off, we don't ever want the lead rope wrapped around that hand so tight that our hand gets stuck. So one or two loose coils or the lead rope can be folded all in the hand. As we're leading the horse, we want to maintain a forward motion. We want to stay at the horse's throw latch with our shoulder. If the horse does happen to get too pushy on us, then we can stop and back them off. And then we can continue walking forward. When we talk about establishing respect with the horse, we want the horse to respect our space. So we don't want them constantly nibbling on us while they're here or creeping over toward us, maybe trying to step on our toes. So one way we can do that is by working on some pivots. And if we walk, start by walking a circle, then I will move into the horse by turning to face them from the side, smooch to them, ask them to take a step over and continue. So if we start by walking a circle, want that horse to take a step laterally to the side as she did and move out of my space. In turns of less than 90 degrees in showmanship, they may have you pull the horse toward you. So you've got to be careful that you're out of the way and don't trip as you step backward. But you can see how pulling the horse in this direction, your feet are in the way you can't see where you're going from behind you. So it's much more safe to push the horse out of our space and have them pivot away from us. When we talk about tying the horse up, we never want to tie a horse up with the bridle reins. So we want to make sure that we have a halter and a cotton lead rope. We want to tie to a sturdy object we want to make sure that it's about eye level with the horse or at least above the withers. We want no more than about 18 to 24 inches of slack in the rope when we tie them. And we also want to make sure that we can get them undone quickly in the case of an accident. So we want to use a slip knot. One of the common mistakes that people make is tying the horse so loose so that they can reach down and eat some grass. And that sounds nice for the horse, but it is very unsafe because they can get their leg caught over the rope as they happen to be walking along and grazing. So as we approach the fence, we can loop the rope around the fence, tie them pretty short, and we want to use some version of a slip knot. And in the case of an emergency, I can just pull on one strand and the rope comes undone and I can get the horse free from the accident. One thing that does tend to happen is that horses will try to untie themselves after getting bored for a while. So we can do a series of loops with this lead rope and then take the tail end of it and just loop it through the last one. In the case of an emergency, get that one piece undone and untie the horse. We do want to make sure that the horses are tied to a stable object. Unstable objects could be something like a portable panel or even a horse trailer that is not attached to a vehicle. 
they can actually drag those objects with them and injure their legs as well as people along the path. So we want to make sure that what we tie to is going to stay there, is safe and solid, will not come out of the ground, and will not injure the horse or the person. If a horse happens to set back in panic, we want to make sure that we are not up at the horse's front end. When the horse sets back, they always end up lunging forward. So you don't want to be in a situation where you could get crushed. When we're grooming and working around horses, we want to make sure they are aware of our presence. We want to make sure we stay out of those zones of being bit, pawed, or kicked. Grooming is also actually a really good way to relax the horse and prepare them before the ride. When we have multiple people working on a specific horse, it's probably the safest for them to be on the same side of the animal. If it jumps in one direction, we've got an out for it to go, and that's over there to the right. We've got one youngster working up here at the shoulder, and we've got one back here at the tail. One of the unsafe practices that we've seen is people standing directly behind the horse to brush the tail. They have a tendency to be able to get kicked in that location. By Allie here bringing the tail over to the side, she's out of the direct line of contact if that horse was to kick straight back. So we have safe locations on the same side and one pulling that tail over to the side to get it brushed. Today we're going to demonstrate how to correctly pick up a horse's foot. We're going to start at the, at the front leg and so I've got Allie here today. She's got her left hand on the horse's shoulder and that can offset his weight and also let her know if the horse is about to react to any outside stimulus. She's going to take her right hand and run it down the front of the horse's front leg, squeeze right about the fetlock or pastern, get the foot up, and then she can safely clean that hoof out. And she has that pick pointed away from her and she's cleaning out along the sides of that horse's foot. When she goes to set the horse's foot back down, she wants to make sure her toes are out of the way. She's off to the side and she sets it gently back down on the ground. Now we're going to move to the back leg. We're going to have a hand on the hip, then we have the right hand. It's going to run this time down the back of the back leg, squeeze at the fetlock, pick up the foot, walk it out. She's going to grab that toe, pick out the hoof as needed, and when she's ready, she'll get out of the way, set that hoof gently back down on the ground and make sure that her toes are not stepped on, she's in a safe position and doesn't get kicked. When we're working with horses at the wash rack, we want to make sure we stay really safe. One example here, we've got rubber mats on a concrete floor that prevents the horse from slipping and sliding when the surface is wet. We want to make sure that the handler maintains a good position. We want a way of escape. So you want to make sure that you're aware of your surroundings, aware of ways that you can get out of harmful situations. You need a method of escape such as a door or an open area. When we move from just handling horses at home to taking them out to shows, we want to acclimate the animal to a show type environment and that may mean radios. We may want to take them out to a small show first, but one of the important things is to practice at home. See if you can get a group of friends, like we have this group of young people here today, getting their horses used to waiting patiently. All of our young people are right at their horse's head. They're facing their horses. They can control their horse by maneuvering that lead rope to back them up, to pull them forward, or to push them to the side. In showmanship and in regular handling of the horse, it's important for the youngster or adult to maintain control of their horse at all times. We have several options through various maneuvers. One, we can maintain control while varying the horse's speed. We can ask them to walk, then move into a trot, and then come back to a walk. So we want them listening to our body language, moving off of our cues, and staying safe. Another way is we can pivot the horse, and again, we're gonna pivot the horse away from us, walk directly into it, so that the youngster does not get their toes stepped on, 
and that the horse learns to respect the handler's space. Another way to maintain control would be to stop the horse and turn and face the horse when you're backing up. Make sure you're not just backing into the horse with your body weight. You can't see what the horse is doing behind you, so it's important for the youngster to turn around, face that animal, and back them off. It's important for the youth to have adult supervision when working with horses. We don't want an accident occurring without anyone to come to their aid. But we want to make sure that the adult doesn't take over the horse project. We want the youth working with their own horse and getting guidance and supervision by a parent or a guardian. In the event that the horse becomes a safety hazard to the child, you want to reevaluate the situation and determine if that is a good match. It is appropriate for you to abandon the project and look at purchasing a different one that would be a better fit if the situation arose.